Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dominique Michael, and I'm a Stonely Emerging Leader Fellow at the Juvenile Law Center. And it is my pleasure to welcome all of you to the official launch of the Youth Matters Philly app. So after months of collaboration between the Juvenile Law Center, um, Hack for Impact, and the School of Policy and Practice at the University of Pennsylvania, and the support from many partners, we are proud to officially introduce an app created to help youth and young adults in Philadelphia find and connect to the many services, programs, and resources our city offers. May 1st marks the beginning of National Foster Care Month. During this month, we especially acknowledge the children and youth who are in the child welfare system. We acknowledge their strengths and their voices, but we also must recognize their needs and the support we collectively owe them as part of our community. We hope that this app is just one of the many investments our community will make to the youth and young adults who are in the foster care system, aging out, and as well as the youth who find themselves homeless in Philadelphia. The well-being and futures of youth matter in Philly. Giving youth tools to find and connect with resources in our community is only one, but one powerful way we can show youth that they matter. Without further delay, I would like to begin introducing our speakers, who despite representing different organizations, are leaders in Philadelphia who are truly committed to honoring the idea that Philadelphia's youth matter. So first, I want to welcome um, Anthony, and the Youth Matters Philly app strives to serve youth, who are one of our community's greatest assets. To make that possible, you've participated in the development and fine-tuning of this app throughout the entire creation process. Our next speaker, Anthony, worked with youth to develop the app and is a member of the Juvenile Law Center's Youth Fostering Change Advocacy Program. So thank you, Anthony. How's everybody doing today? Hey. Hello. Hello. My name is Anthony Simpson. I'm, employ I'm an employee and advocate for youth fostering change at the Juvenile Law Center, and a current member at the Achieving Independent Center, and a former homeless youth. When I was initially informed about the Youth Matters Philly app, my mind went back to the days when I had nothing to my name, no nobody to turn to, and nowhere to go. I thought of all the times this could have been an invaluable tool, for those days when I needed, some needed support or something to eat, a place to change my clothes or even just someone to talk to. Now, I'm here speaking to you all today on the first day of National Foster Care Month to acknowledge why this tool is so important. Specifically, when your youth are just aging out of care and experiencing homelessness, it can be very tough to find assistance. Not everyone has your best interest at heart. When you're out in the street, you're more vulnerable to being taken advantage of, for you're wanting to sleep, for you're wanting to be any place that has just a little heat or furniture, because you see, when you've experienced homelessness, you foster a new appreciation for life and basic necessities that many people may never experience. Case, you could never experience. The truth is, for most youth experiencing, experiencing severe cases of housing insecurity, those shoes resting against the nape of their necks is their pillow. The gravel tearing at their torso as they toss and turn is the bed. The sirens of a passing emergency vehicle is the alarm clock. And for the youth spending their nights trying to find somewhere to rest, this is their reality. Now I'd like to ask the audience a question. Uh, could you guys raise your hand if you were aware that one out of 20 high schoolers in Philadelphia has experienced homelessness? Uh, for those of you who didn't raise their hand, sadly you're not alone. One of the things that makes homelessness especially troubling for our youth is that word. Homeless. Whether through popular media or extreme cases we might see on our way to work, for many of us, the word homeless conjures images of ragged, ragged poses and new lethargy. And for this reason, if a young person isn't at least in their presentation showing evidence of malnourishment or excessive housing insecurity, then their plight can easily go unnoticed by their peers and even by the various workers in the case of youth in foster care. This stigma has a massive impact on the prevention and direct treatment of homelessness. Regardless of the severity of the situation, no child should bear the responsibility of acquiring housing alone. Though, in these times of technology being so accessible and so essential to the social sphere of young people today, they're never truly alone, are they? During my bouts with homelessness, the most common possession, myself and the other teens that I'd encountered in shelters, 
when I was just looking for a permit, a permit home was the same object many teenagers have in their pockets and mostly their hands, a smartphone. A cell phone is life. It's a way to keep in touch with friends whom we may have had to separate from, how we keep track of time for when the days seem to blend together between unstructured catnaps and for some memorabilia to a time before finding ourselves without shelter. So naturally, the solution has always presented itself to use technology as a means to connect and assist young people in need. All that was needed was a team of developers and an empathetic, excuse me, and relevant keen eye to the essential nature and capabilities of most smartphones. That's where the Juvenile Law Center, University of Penn School for Policy and Practice, and Hack for Impact comes in. Youth Matter Philly is an app that seeks to integrate the finding and vetting of resources for young people in an accessible and mobile manner. It has been my pleasure to provide assistance for working with JLC staff to identify resources that vulnerable young people may need and updating to make suggestions to the user interface. This is a very viable and important tool for young people and the adults in their lives that may serve and support them. And I simply cannot wait for the cell phone to become not only a tool for selfies, but a tool for survival. Thank you. was really impressed with what Anthony had to say and I just have to acknowledge that before I can move on. Uh, so next, um, our next speaker, um, the Philadelphia Department of Human Services is a child welfare agency in Philadelphia and plays a major role in improving the lives of vulnerable youth in our community. Our next speaker, Commissioner Cindy Figueroa, is the committed leader of DHS. Thank you. Hello everybody. So many beautiful faces and I have to, I mean, what an amazing title, right? You, youth Matter Philly, because youth matter and, and to the young people in the room, it's so great to see you all. And another round of applause, Anthony. So you heard everybody say this is the first day of National Foster Care Month. This month provides us an opportunity to acknowledge the wonderful caring communities that support children and youth in foster care and help them find permanent homes. It's also a time for us to focus as a community on how we can create more positive future for the youth that are currently living in foster care. This is a perfect time to celebrate the launch of Youth Matters Philly. This is a powerful new tool for our older youth that are transitioning to adulthood. We here at the um, Achieving Independence Center, it's an essential program for older youth transitioning to adulthood. It's supported by the Department of Human Services, and we're so pleased to be a partner in this opportunity. Really today, who we have to thank most is our young people in the room, folks like Anthony who were involved in the development. I also want to thank the team that helped bring this incredible resource to life. Susan Manigold, Jennifer Pekempner, Dominique McHale from the Juvenile Law Center, and the University of Pennsylvania School of Social Policy and Practice, and Hack for Impact. I also want to recognize our Councilwoman Helen Geim, who is a huge advocate for foster care and our children, and a huge advocate for bringing the needs and the quality of care to the forefront. I want to thank for the development of this work. We work hard every day to make sure that youth have access to permanency, but we also know the reality is that many older youth in Philadelphia exit the system with not enough resource or a caring adult by their side. We want every youth who finds themselves in this situation or close to this situation to have the right resources available to support them. Supports like the Achieving Uni uh, Independent Center and this new app, Youth Matters Philly, is almost guaranteed that every single youth that comes through this door could create that opportunity, have the opportunity right available in the palm of their hand. And Anthony said it best, that while there isn't other resources available, almost all of us have phones and that it's not just a mode of communication that's about social, it can be about survival. So I wanna thank you all, and I wanna thank for all the work that was put into it. Thank you, because um, youth matter, Philly. Hello, everyone. So our next guest is a strong supporter of young people in Philadelphia, and it is Councilwoman Helen Gim. afternoon everybody what a thrilling day so I want to thank um, everybody especially juvenile law center Penn School of Social Policy and Practice um, and everyone in this room for allowing me to join you today 
I've talked a lot about the importance of technology in our society, and I think everybody understands like it's really great to see technology and innovation move. Um, but there isn't any value in a technology that becomes precious unto itself, that becomes just about the race to be the fastest, most cleverest thing. The true challenge and frontier of technology is when we actually use technology to make a difference in the lives of the people who need it the most. And to be perfectly honest, seeing technology apps that come and go, that move us um, and are just a matter of distraction, um, isn't not necessarily what this world needs right now. We actually need the kind of technology that connects us to one another, that helps us access the resources and services that we need, um, and that are geared for and designed for our most vulnerable citizens. That is the technology that is truly innovative. That's the technology that's truly on the new frontier, and that's the technology that's going to make a difference in our city. So it is a thrill to talk, to be here with you to celebrate the new partnership with uh, Juvenile Law Center and the School of Policy and Practice. Um, youth matters incredibly. I'm the chair of the Children and Youth Committee. Um, I came in with a deep passion about letting young people know that in this city you are valued, you are important, you matter, um, and we're working hard. And that in the most vulnerable times of your lives, we're not going to let everything fall apart. We're going to try and figure out the resources um, that you need. And Youth Matters Philly, thanks to the clever work and hard work of so many people, is part of that message. Um, and especially now, as we're living in a time where it just feels super intense for a lot of people, for a lot of vulnerable children and families, um, safety is really important. And being able to have a sense of agency and empowerment to learn to do this work yourself is actually also incredibly important. Um, and so putting this power in the hands of young people, helping them figure out the connections, which will then help them figure out how to reach um, out to other people, is the kind of work that we really need to see done. Um, this work has been going on for a really long time. It is far from complete. But thanks to today, we're one step closer to seeing the kind of city that's going to uplift our young people, celebrate them, honor them, and give them the power they need to make a difference in their lives. So thank you to everyone for helping make that happen. So our next speaker um, is one of the major partners in this work. And as I previously mentioned, um, this app wouldn't have been possible without a partnership between three organizations, the Juvenile Law Center, Hack for Impact, and the School of Policy and Practice at the University of Pennsylvania. So I want to introduce the person that spearheaded the work at the School of Social Policy and Practice, Professor Johanna Greeson. He's got to squeeze through. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm an assistant professor at the School of Social Policy and Practice at the University of Pennsylvania. And um, before I get started, I do just want to acknowledge um, our students from Hack for Impact. You guys can raise your hand. Uh, these two impressive young women did the majority of the heavy tech lifting, or not really the majority, they did all of it. Um, and so without them, our vision, mine as well as JLC's, truly would not have been able to come to fruition. Um, so I feel very strongly that um, part of this celebration is about um, your <coughs> major contribution and all the um, hard work, effort, time, energy that they put into this on top of both carrying full course loads as computer science majors. So. Um, my work focuses on reforming the child welfare system and using research to build better future for kids who age out of foster care. A focus of my work is on the power and importance of connections in the lives of young people as they grow up. One of the most important connections that uh, youth must have is to caring adults. My research focuses on increasing social support among youth who are aging out of foster care. I've developed an innovative natural mentoring model that strives to support youth in foster care 
in identifying and solidifying relationships with caring adults in their lives. Youth Matters Philly helps youth with another vital connection, connecting to resources in the community. And it does so in a way that youth want, using technology. So this project was truly collaborative in nature. It brought the talent of youth, students, social work, uh, researchers like myself, and advocates together to build a tool uh, that <coughs> seeks to help youth as they transition to adulthood. I look forward to our continued collaboration as we uh, pilot uh, the app even more, um, engage in research projects, um, looking at the effectiveness of the app, and using my research skills and commitment to youth in foster care to improve the opportunities available to them. To me, this project represents the best that our city has to offer, collaboration that spans academia, tech, social innovation, community partners, government, and most importantly, young people. Thank you. So, last but certainly not least, I would like to introduce Marcia Hopkins, who is the Youth Advocacy Program Manager at the Juvenile Law Center, who worked diligently with other staff members at the Juvenile Law Center to bring this app into existence. As mentioned before, May is National Foster Care Month. Each year nationally, about 25,000 young people age out of foster care. In Pennsylvania, that number is about 800, and in Philadelphia, it's about 200 per year. This means that foster youth have not found family either through reunification with their own biological family or through adoption. For many of them at age 18 or 21, they enter the adult world, adult world on their own, lacking the support and family system that many of us rely on as we grow up and become adults. The Youth Matters Philly app was really designed to empower young people and adult, I'm sorry, young people in Philadelphia to connect to resources like housing, food, clothing, medical care, and educational resources quickly and efficiently. The app is targeted at young adults ages 14 to 26 and puts valuable information and resources directly in the hands of youth. <coughs> Behind me, you can see a little demonstration of the app here that shows a map of Philadelphia and how you can locate some resources. The app was created with input from young people like Anthony and other young, young youth and many community stakeholders, many of whom are in the room today and we all wanna thank you. Their collaboration and input was instrumental to make this app successful and relevant for vulnerable youth. We are dedicated to continuing to enhance the app for young people in the future and look forward to your continued collaboration and partnership. We would like to give a special thanks to our youth advocates, some of whom are in the room, <coughs> AIC, DHS, Hack for Impact, our team of leaders, Nani and Ani, and the staff and youth at AIC. We would like to thank members of the 100 Day Challenge to End Youth Homelessness for their input and commitment to preventing homelessness for youth in Philadelphia. We would also like to acknowledge Nikki Johnson Hudson, who created the Donify app and challenged many advocates in Philadelphia to truly use technology for social good. Thank you for your time. We're gonna take questions, yeah. if anybody has any questions. So I can hopefully move around the room with this mic. Actually, why don't you project and then <laughs> I will move my two speakers if need be. So any questions in the room? So the app is a web-based app, and so what that means is you would take the link and you can um, get on it from either your mobile device or from your home computer. If you are using it on your cell phone, you're a young person, you can put in the link um, and you can download it to your home screen. That way it's easily accessible for you. Um, and we're not doing a demonstration here, but if you, when you get to the app, on the left-hand side, you'll have the ability to search either by name of a resource or by type. So like if you wanted to look for clothing, you could type that in and then a list on the left hand side will come up and you have the ability to kind of search through the mapping system. And just, just to be clear, the website is youthmattersphilly.org. And what, after we 
we finish with questions, if people um, want to put it on their phone and want to have a mini demo, you can find one of us and we can do that to yep. show you. We'd be happy to. Any other questions from the audience? Is it live? Like, say for example, uh, will it reflect like where I am? Mm -hmm. Let's say if I'm in Germantown, tell me like what's in my geographical mm -hmm. area. Yes, so <laughs> that's a really good question though. Um, so yeah, if you, when you're here, you can actually type in um, your, lo not your location. You can put in your location um, or say, if you're not at lo your location, you can put in maybe your home address or your work address and it will filter out and show you the resources that are really close to where you are or where you would like to be and it will give you directions. And we have a Google mapping um, resources so you can look at it in different views um, and see what type of public transportation you can use to get there. What, what help do you need from us to get the word out? Well, <laughs> that's a really good question. Dominique, you might want to come in here and yeah. ask this too. Um, well, I think part of it is, so one thing we think is really important is that it is designed for young people, but it's also designed for the individuals that serve <clears throat> those youth. So I think getting it out to your staff or your agency and really teaching adults how to use it and download it on their phone. I mean, how cool would it be if I'm working with a young person and I can text them a resource? We do have that ability um, on the site. Or if I just want to send them the link or tell them the name of a program to connect. Um, funding is always a big thing, but um, part of it too. Other things, people, we have a social media kit. If you do want some prepackaged tweets, Facebook posts that you want to send out to your network, we can definitely provide those to you. We're happy to do this. The app is pretty self-explanatory, but we're happy to do train the trainers so that you, if you want to pull your staff together and do some demos and just have them do some practice, we're happy to do that. So we're happy to help you get the word out anyway with all your networks. We do have some resources too, picking back and uh, back off what Jenny said that we could give to the agencies if you need them. If we find your resources not listed, how do we get it added? Yeah, so one of the really cool features of the app, to really think of this as a community effort, is that in the app we have two ways for you to help us continue to build the resource base. In the right hand corner, there's a suggest a resource button where you can give us some information about a resource that you think should be added, and you can just as much information as you know, if you only know their name, we'll take that, we'll get an email notification and we can then go and research that organization and fully add them to the app. Um, another thing is, you know, everybody makes mistakes and if you see that a, a piece of information on our website is wrong, so perhaps the organization changed their hours and we have their old hours listed, on each resource at the bottom, there's a suggest a change button and you can suggest an edit for us to make to the resource and then we can go ahead, we'll get the same email notification and we can update it. Other questions folks have? Yes, of course. Um, do you have a plan for how you'll share the impact of the site? So how many people are accessing it, using it, connecting? <clears throat> Yeah, I think that's a really good point, and I think in the future we'll, we would be happy to be able to issue some some just general things. Plus, we have a fabulous researcher, Professor Greeson, who can help us with that effort. Um, so one of my plans is to uh, do an evaluation study, essentially, of the app, and we'll, so that'll be kind of a baseline for us, um, and to start looking at how kids are young people are using it and um, and what their feedback is about how useful it is um, and so it'll be sort of a moving target in that you know that'll be just one snapshot point in time um, impression of the app but then as it grows and develops you know we can look at reevaluating it at different times but that's definitely something that we are planning for and anticipating and is there a final <coughs> question okay Along that same line, if we are working with a young person and they do have feedback, what's the best way to either a way on the website or their contact specifically? Yeah. There's actually a way on the website, because again, we wanted to make this really simple for you guys, so there's a contact us button. Um, it's like kind of in the center of the right hand side. Um, and you can give us a message if something technically isn't working, if you have a suggestion for something you think should change about the app in the future, anything, and we'll get that message as well. And, and we're really excited about We've all been really excited to launch the app because we really want to find out what people think about it so we can keep innovating and perfecting it. 
Um, we're out of time for, for questions in the large group, but I really want to make it, encourage you all, if you have any questions for any of our speakers, to feel free to catch them. We're gonna open it up to refreshments. Um, if you wanna speak to a youth that um, was working on this app project, please feel free to see Katie, who's right here, and Heather, we don't know where she, Heather, who's right there, um, and they will direct you to speak to a youth. And then last but not least, if you are a youth in the room, um, we have a gift for you. So please, if you could make your way back to this table with lovely Chelsea. Um, we actually have Jostring bags with the logo on them and a few things inside them. So youth, please come get that because we made them especially for you um, because this app is for you. And thank you everyone again for coming and we're really happy that everyone could come. <laughs>